We are joined tonight by Garrick Utley. He's the president of the Levin Institute of the State University of New York and a former NBC News foreign correspondent and anchor. Also with us is Charles Sennett. He was a longtime correspondent for the Boston Globe and is now the executive editor and vice president of Global Post. Welcome to both of you. Nice to see you. Thank you. So let's start with Iran. The president had given uh, the Iranians the target date of September to come to the table and start negotiating over their nuclear program. We are now in September. Where do we go from here? Well, where does President Obama go? One, but uh, secondly, can he do it alone? This is a UN action. Obviously, nations such as the Russians have a veto there in terms of sanction steps. But also, there is Sarkozy in France and Angela Merkel in Germany and the UK. They're very much concerned and want to have this pressure. So even if Obama can get everybody together to say, yes, the time has now come to take further steps, uh, you have the problem with the Russians and the Iranians, as we know. We have been discussing this, sent their proposals, which are very vague, but at least when Obama said in his inaugural address, I'll hold out an open hand, uh, they are now offering to talk. So you just say, yeah. we won't enter talks. Should we enter talks? Yeah. yeah well, what happened to, to that whole idea of, you know, here's, here's an olive branch, mm -hmm. you know, let's do away with the clenched first. The Iranians are saying yes as a package of proposals. The United States says it wants diplomacy. Uh, where yeah. is the diplomacy from, from both sides? Well, I think the Obama administration's inclination, and, and its announced inclination, was they do want to talk with Iran. Um, but then something happened, and that was the June election and mm -hmm. the demonstrations in the street. And suddenly you are dealing with Ahmadinejad in a, in a way in which he is no longer seen or in a decreasing legitimacy than he had even before in a really contested election, in a roiling public that wants change. And America is suddenly caught in its foreign policy. The Obama administration has to decide now, does it want to go forward with the negotiation as it's spelled out, or did June change everything? And do they now need to back off of that because of that election and its contested right. results? But that also means, doesn't it, Charles, that the issue is no longer just about nuclear energy and nuclear weapons. It is about the relationship now about legitimizing the, the government in right. Tehran and strengthening that or pulling back, right. which may achieve a greater or more desired goal, which is change on the ground. So, I think, I so think you're is, right. Has it, if, I mean, given those complications, which, mm -hmm. you know, do complicate things enormously, I'm assuming for President Obama, would now be an appropriate time to just sort of put this on hold rather than go down this route of, you know, mm -hmm. we want to mm -hmm. have sanctions and the Russians are saying, no, we're not going to support that. The Chinese may come out and say the same thing. What is the point of going down this route well, if it's... The Russians will always so complicate this for us. I mean, for the United States policy will always be complicated by the Russians being in that equation. And that's, that's very real. I think this will come to a head when Ahmadinejad visits New York, visits the U.N., and he's going to be here, and there is going to be a, a really a great call for him to release the Newsweek correspondent who's still being held, to release the, many of the journalists and the bloggers who are still being detained. I mean, there are things for Ahmadinejad to answer for, and I think, yes, it will have to go into uh, a cooling pattern where the United States is going to have to be very clear that this government is seen as increasingly illegitimate, and they're going to have to put that forward. But there's one other aspect here, which is Israel. We may go into a holding or a cooling pattern, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, but Israel and Netanyahu, the prime minister of the government, may they not be that everything. patient. They may act unilaterally, and so you can't really allow an open-ended situation where nothing has happened. Yeah. At some point, Israel says we have to act. And let's move on to the other big foreign policy question, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. A lot going on with that story also. Give us... Both of you, your, your assessments of where the president stands with that. Mm -hmm. His dilemma is first, and I'll be very brief, you can't move forward, you can't move backward. You don't want to go in with vast amounts of combat troops if they were available, because it's an open-ended combat situation. You're not going to have a military victory. That's not likely. You don't want to schedule a pullout. So you're stuck somewhere in the middle, and mm. you're the expert on that. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm an expert, but... Are troops a good idea or from, not? I, I think having been on the ground there in the month of June, and seeing that the troops that are there now, this is a 21,000 increase that is flowing in right now and that will bring U.S. presence up to 68,000 troops. That's already an increase. That's what Obama said he wanted. That's what his generals said they wanted. When they try now to go beyond that increase, they're going to run into a political fight with the Democrats. So my assessment from, from the ground would be the troops that are there now need to be better at what they do now. They need to be more well-trained, more educated about where they are, so that they can discern 
uh, through, through a more sophisticated understanding of their counterinsurgency campaign, who are the reconcilable Taliban and who are the irreconcilable Taliban. And without that very local ground truth, that, that real sense of being in those villages and understanding them, I don't see how an increase in troops could do anything. And in fact, I would argue an increase in troops could alienate the population and could really backfire. Gary, Certainly this agree? is the case on the ground, but I want to bring up another point. It is the domestic political equation Obama has to look at. He came in posing as a national security president, I will protect you by sending more troops to Afghanistan. That's the war of necessity the Democrats have supported. And now Democratic support in Congress is eroding, public support isn't there. The great existential danger for Obama is that if he were to weaken his resolve or be seen to do so in Afghanistan, and there's another terrorist strike, uh, whether it comes from al-Qaeda in Afghanistan or elsewhere, all the Repu what the Republicans were doing to Obama on health care is nothing compared to what you're going to hear from the talk shows that the Democrats and the president have not protected us. Mm -hmm. So he cannot afford politically to disengage. I, I would agree, and I would also say, you know, these comparisons with Vietnam are tired. But right now, in this moment, I do think that President Obama faces a Johnson moment. President Johnson tried to greatly expand what he could accomplish on his national agenda while fighting a devastating war. I think that Obama is in that moment now, and he's looking at that kind of history if he's not careful in this moment. All right. There's plenty to talk about. We could go on for a little longer, but we've mm -hmm. got to leave it there. Garrick Utley and uh, Charles Sennett, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you.